Hi everyone, my name is Miriam Moroni and, and I'm currently a fourth year student finishing my degree in Arts Joint Honours. Throughout this presentation, I'll be discussing the research I undertook for my final year project. As you can see from this first slide, the context of this topic derives from one of the most heavily reported missing persons cases of all time, which is the infamous disappearance of Madeleine McCann from her bed in a holiday apartment at a resort in Portugal on the 3rd of May 2007, which means that 2020 will mark the 13th year since she vanished. Over the years, there has been a sustained mass media interest in her disappearance, which still stands today. I am sure that all of you who are listening are aware that this mass media obsession also extended with regards to Madeleine's parents. And at certain times, an intense spotlight appeared to be shown on the behaviour and actions of Kate and Jerry McCann. Therefore, my interest is not in the actual disappearance of Madeleine McCann, but is instead investigating the way that the media have portrayed Kate and Jerry McCann since Madeleine went missing, and how this portrayal influenced possible perceptions of them. The title of my project, therefore, is Framing the McCanns, an investigation into the media representations of Kate and Jerry McCann during three different time frames following the disappearance of their daughter. OK, so firstly, I'm going to briefly explain the reasons as to why I chose this subject as the topic for my FYP. Firstly, my interest in this subject matter stemmed from my curiosity as to why the Madeleine McCann case gained so much recognition globally in comparison to other missing children cases. Although I was quite young when she disappeared, I was struck by the fierce media coverage that it gained and how her parents' plight to find her was on the front pages of many newspapers and magazines. What really caught my attention was the apparent love-hate relationship that the McCanns shared with the media, as I noticed that as the case gained momentum, headlines were becoming more critical and suspicious of their actions and behaviour, and pretty soon their story was being revised and relayed every day in a serialised manner. I therefore felt that making this the subject of my FYP would give me the opportunity to come to my own conclusion regarding the media's role in spreading false claims and evidently casting suspicion on Kate and Jerry McCann. Furthermore, as I am a sociology student, I have studied the effects that the media, of the media and its potential to manipulate events, especially emotionalised ones. Therefore, I decided to fuse these two interests that I had together and this is how I moulded my research question. In order to carry out this research, I firstly had to immerse myself in studies that had already been conducted regarding the McCanns. This was again an overall idea of the research that has already been proven. I conducted a thematic analysis on a range of articles already published about the McCanns, and the three themes that emerged for me were trial by media, class status and the ideal mother. The literature review really gave me an awareness of the themes that were already known regarding the McCanns and provided me with a good starting point for my research. To achieve an overall visualisation of the McCanns, I decided to carry out a frame analysis of Kate and Jerry McCann focused articles from three different time frames since Madeleine disappeared. The first time frame was from the 3rd to the 17th of May 2007, with the 3rd marking the day that Madeleine disappeared. The second time frame was from the 7th to the 21st of September 2007, during which time the McCanns were made suspects. The third time frame was from the 15th to the 29th of March 2019, which coincides with the release of the controversial Netflix documentary covering the disappearance of Madeleine. I examined articles from British tabloids and broadsheet newspapers. As I mentioned above, my method of analysis was called frame analysis. The theory that underpins this mode of analysis is called framing theory, which is credited to Irving Goffman and Robert Entman. The main idea behind framing theory is, according to Kitzinger 2000, that nowadays journalists are increasingly framing the stories that they are writing in order to influence the way that we think about a situation and the key players involved in it." End quote. It is comparable to when you take a photo and put it on Instagram. You freeze an image to make a situation look a certain way, possibly editing it and cutting parts of it out, so the resulting photo does not reveal the whole story. Building upon this theory, frame analysis is the method I use to identify the frames that have been put in place by journalists. From my analysis of the articles written about Kate and Jerry McCann during time frame one, it became very clear that they received inundated support and sympathy from both the media and the public. However, I found that the media chose to highlight certain aspects of their lives, which I feel was done to make the audience feel more sympathetic towards them. For example, one of the frames I identified was classism, in that the media sought to highlight that Kate and Jerry McCann were both doctors from an affluent area and lived in a five-bedroom detached house, which they paid 880000 for. A huge significance was placed on the luxurious accommodation of the McCanns and that they chose the upmarket resort because it was family friendly. This was done to reinforce that they should not be held accountable for Madeleine's disappearance. Overall, one could argue that during time frame one, Kate and Jer Jerry McCann were framed in a manner that would charm and entice the public to help them, and they that they should not be held responsible for the disappearance of Madeleine. During time frame two, I detected a serious change in how the media represented the McCanns. The change of status from apparent innocent victims to being made formal suspects by the Portuguese police was a major blow to their original depiction and led to a dramatic transformation of how they were framed in the media. The disparaging of Kate McCann is a major theme that stood out in the articles. 
Kate was convicted by the media of being the main culprit involved in the disappearance of her daughter, with Jerry only being an accomplice. The majority of articles focused on Kate's odd demeanour and actions, while very little was ever published about Jerry unless journalists were talking about them both as a couple. The vilification of the McCanns was further enhanced by a range of sensationalist theories as to why they may have murdered their daughter, with an absence of a voice of reason to ground opinions and focus on facts instead of speculation. The articles I examined for Time Frame 3 were published 10 years after Madeleine vanished. My findings show a mix of old frames amalgamating together in what seems to be conflicting feelings and views towards the McCanns today. It was clear from the articles that although many of the sensationalist theories surrounding the McCanns as being murderers has been debunked, criticism and resentment towards them still exists. The huge cost of keeping the search for Madeleine alive was made salient in these articles and it was found that hostility towards the McCanns reaches a peak when the question of funding comes up. Many journalists appear to have taken a step back from the conspiracy theories and looked to the bigger picture, but the trial by media that was so intense still has an impact on how they are being reported on today. Overall, the results of my findings concluded that the media representations of Kate and Jerry McCann has changed greatly over time, and I was able to pinpoint the reasons for these changes. Class prejudice and contextualisation of the McCanns being wealthy really contributed to their depiction in the media, both in a positive and negative way from their point of view. This is in line with what I found in my literature review regarding class status. Moreover, the trial by media which occurred during the second time frame was a phenomenon that starkly contrasted with their previous support. The sensationalism that journalists used played a huge role in implicating the McCanns in having had accidentally killed or murdered Madeleine. Although the melodramatic headlines did not return in time frame 3, one could argue that a lingering trial by media still persists against the McCanns. Overall, I really enjoyed researching this topic and I have really learned to view the media and its effects in a different way than I used to. This study helped to show how Kate and Jerry McCann were so uniquely put under the microscope and how highly publicised media coverage of emotionalised events can have such a, a persisting impact on society. Thanks so much to everyone for listening and I hope you enjoyed it.